Landfill issues has been commonly reported as one factor contribute to contamination of groundwater. In Malaysia, the government more focuses on the issue of surface water contamination compared to groundwater resource. This is due to plenty of surface water as the alternative for public domestic use. However, remediation for contaminated groundwater is still necessary as leachate originated from landfill persists for decades in aquifer layer. At some area with aquifer close to river might have an adverse impact towards the quality of the river. In developing countries, landfills have been regarded as the best options in waste management system as it is the most economic, easiest and efficient ways to be implemented. In Malaysia, there are 170 waste disposal dumping sites throughout the country. However, only 17 numbers of landfill have been converted into engineered sanitary landfill. Uncontrolled manner in dumping waste has constituted continuous source of atmospheric and groundwater pollution due to the oxidation of organic matter. Hence, it is important to study on the adverse impact of improper waste management system where our case study focuses at Ampang Tenang landfill. The objectives are to understand the social, environmental and economic implications on the groundwater pollution, to evaluate the various groundwater remediation methods, to assess the effectiveness of groundwater remediation works performed. In this Ampang Tenang landfill research, total of six monitoring wells were positioned with three wells installed at the upslope and another three wells at downslope of the site. The water samples from the wells are extracted and analysed on its properties. It is observed that the result samples contain high in heavy metals and organic pollutants. The measured pH values were relatively at medium range, whereby the range of conductivity values were high. Groundwater flow directions were determined by constructing a groundwater contour map flow net using groundwater level data. It is observed that the groundwater flow is towards Labu River, which eventually flow into Langat River. A great number of uncontrolled landfills without appropriate bottom liners and leachate collection system have been widespread in Malaysia. There are three main effects of contamination which is 1. Ecosystem the most effect to the ecosystem is when the leachate goes into the nearest river. It will contaminate the river system and most probably will disturb the river life such as fishes, prawns, seed plants and other life that depends on the river system. Ampar Tanang landfill mostly affected to Labu River. Number of contaminants including heavy metals readily penetrated to the formation and eventually reach the groundwater. The water table is also influenced by fluctuation of the water level in Labu River. It has been found that soils downstream of the site has been considerably contaminated by heavy metal compared to upstream soil. 2. Environment the most common production by landfill are leachate. This leachate release into waterways after full of partial treatment. Leachate from Ampat Tenang landfill will flows into Labu River, which is located nearest to the landfill site. And last, to the general public. One of the most problems generated to public was the adult issue. Adult complaints are very common due to unpleasant adult. Public will face health effect due to the adult exposure such as nausea, headache and many more. There are a few methods to remove contaminants in groundwater. The first method is in-situ chemical treatment which involves the injection of oxidants into the ground. The oxidants will destruct only at the contaminants of concern. The common oxidants used are permanganate, Fenton's region, persulfate, and ozone. The second method is pump and treat system, which has been widely used for more than two decades for remediation of groundwater contamination. In the system, 
the contaminated groundwater is extracted from the ground, treated over ground, and finally injected into the aquifer. The extracted groundwater is treated using adsorption, bioreactors, constructed wetland, and air strippings. Air sparging is a traditional remediation technique in which air is injected into contaminated groundwater to allow organic contaminants transfer from the dissolved phase to the vapor phase and then it is removed by air venting. Air sparging can be adapted into biosparging which aims at supplying oxygen underground to stimulate microbial growth to enhance biodegradation of organic contaminants. Remediation on groundwater has been an issue due to high construction and operation costs. Besides, plenty of surface water as our main resource would be an added value as it is more economical rather than extracting groundwater. Hence, our government are more tolerant to remediation work that relate to ground surface activities such as sanitary landfill, composting, and recycling. As such, there will be the added burden of transporting the organic waste to the composting facility. The landfilling method has been practiced successfully in many developed countries as being the most economical and environmentally acceptable method for the disposal of municipal solid waste. Composting is another method used to reduce some of the organic portion of municipal solid waste. Although composting is seen as having good potential for waste reduction, a key issue lies in the need to pre-sort the waste materials to produce compost of acceptable grade. The composting process also generates odor issues and may introduce harmful substances to soils if the waste contents are not acceptable. To minimize the impact of odor, composting facilities should be located in fairly remote areas. As such, there will be the added burden of transporting the organic waste to the composting facility. Waste recycling is also an option for waste management system. The fundamental issues related to waste recycling include the separation of waste materials to recover the reusable and recyclable materials. When stricter specifications are imposed, the cost incurred for sorting and collection system to be implemented will be higher and hence recycling may not be cost effective. The type of waste to be recovered depends on the demand and potential uses of the recovered materials. This is limited to materials that currently have a high commercial value such as aluminium, paper, cardboard, plastics, glass, metals and for which recycling technologies are already available. The decision to undertake recycling operations on a large scale would be heavily influenced by the communities that are served. If there are insufficient recyclable materials available, it may not be viable to invest in a central recycling unit. As such, facilities are costly to set up and to operate. Recycling, although recommended on small scale, it is not considered as a full waste disposal option. As a conclusion, the clean-up measures are recommended to prevent further movement of contaminants into the groundwater and surface water system, as well as to ensure environmental sustainability. Action such as waste removal, construction of containment wall, and pumping of contaminated groundwater may need to be considered. It is also recommended that specific guidelines and standards to address issues related to landfill be established. Currently, Ampar Tenang Landfill is recommended for safe closure since they have had surpassed the operation capacity and the landfill is located in an area with high groundwater level.